book of John, amen, chapter number 11. Hallelujah. And I thank God for his hand of protection that stays upon us. Amen. God has kept his hand on us through the years, and we are very blessed, amen, by the hand of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, I thank God for our visitors that are in the back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, we're glad you are here. Amen. In the house of the Lord. John chapter number 11. Now a certain man was named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment. Now uh, let me back up. I miss one word. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bez Bethany, the town of Mary and, Martha and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified uh, thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that, she, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, he say, he, that saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and, dost, and goest thou thither again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If a man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. If a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he after he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may wake him out of his sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought he spoke of taking rest in sleep. Jesus, then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Amen. In verse number 17, then when Jesus came, he found that, that he had been laying in the grave four days already, and Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, a bunch of people grieving. And uh, in verse number, uh, verse number 21, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, <clears throat> Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this. And she said, Lord, yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which cometh into the world. You bypass what I was asking you. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Amen. I thank God for the hope of truth that God has given us. Amen. Let's love the Lord together one more time. In the name of Jesus Christ, I love you, Lord. I thank you for your word that's forever settled in heaven. Pray, O oh God, as your word is anointed, that same anointing would fall heavy upon us here today. Touch every heart and every life, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask these things and I give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the Word of God. I believe in divine providence. I believe that God has His will and His purpose in everything. I believe that there are things that happen, amen, and it happens for a purpose. Amen. All of a sudden, things we may not understand, amen, come to pass. I believe that whenever Jesus Christ said he must needs, and I'm, I'm backing up a little bit into another story, but I believe whenever the Bible said Jesus must needs go through Samaria, and he, I believe that he timed his visit, 
and knew that there was a lady going to come to a well at a particular time. I believe that before he ever got there, he said, we got to pick up the pace today because there's a lady that's going to be coming about 2 o'clock. Oh, we got to slow it back because she's going to be there about 2 and we're making too much speed. Whatever the time frame was, he waited until he knew that the disciples would be gone and the woman would show up. I believe that God operates in that way. I believe that God, amen, will sometimes go beside, amen, at times would walk, amen, and hear the blind man and ignore him, but he knew already that he was going to heal him. He knew before he ever started down the path, amen, that there was going to be a healing that day, amen. He just knew that there were some things that had to click into place before the miracle could happen. Amen. And uh, as a matter of fact, if I take it just a little step farther, amen, the disciples asked Jesus one time, see this blind man? Amen. Why is he blind? Is it because of his sin? And Jesus said, no, the reason he's blind is there's going to be glory that's God's going to get out of the miracle that's getting ready to happen in his life. Amen. The blindness of that boy, amen, came to him because God had a miracle, amen, that God wanted to perform in his life. Amen. He spent half of his life blind because God had a miracle getting ready for him. Amen. And God was going to give him something great within his life. I believe that that's the way that God operates. Hallelujah. I believe that God, amen, knows exactly where we're at any time that we're walking with him. Amen. Every day, whenever, whatever the day might bring our way. Amen. If it's a trouble that comes our way, if it's a trial that comes our way, amen, or if it's a good day, I believe that God has his hand upon that day. And when he steps, when we step at the end of the day, amen, we may not have seen his hand at the beginning, but when we finish, amen, the trial, we'll be able to say, look at what God has wrought. Look at the hand of God. <coughs> Excuse me. My, how God has operated within our life. <coughs> Excuse me, just a moment. Amen. Got a little tickle in my throat. Amen. Sorry. Hallelujah. So when we read the story of Lazarus, I believe, amen, that the timing on the story of Lazarus was according to the will of God. I believe that whenever you're reading this story, amen, God in his infinite ways, amen, knowing all things, amen, I believe that he knew there would be a day that Lazarus would die and that he would be resurrected. I believe that he had the timing of it down. I don't believe it was just, oh, he just got sick on a particular day and then he died. No, I believe that God, in his infinite wisdom, knew exactly on what day that Lazarus was going was to draw his last. I believe he still does that. Yes. And that's why the Bible said, amen, in the Old Testament, Isaiah walked into the, walked into the king and he said, set thine house in order because you're going to die and you're not going to live. Now, God spared that boy for 15 years. Amen. Spared that king for 15 years. But according to the plan of God, if God hadn't changed his mind, that boy was getting ready, amen, to be a part of a funeral procession. One where he'd be the lead instrument. And I believe that whenever Lazarus got sick, I believe that it was, excuse me, but I believe that it was according to the will of God. Because God had something that he needed to prove at that particular time in his life. He needed to show, amen, the world, amen, who he was and what power that he had. And somebody had to get sick and die in order for them to show that power. I, you know, I, I, I believe that he has that, that, he has that, uh, that ability and that right. 
Some things that I go through and some things that I've been through in my life, I probably would have, would have chosen a different path had I known that that was the way that it was going to happen. Amen. But God knew what he was doing, and I believe that God put me on some paths. Amen. And uh, some of the foolish things that I did to correct me, amen, and he'd get me going straight, I believe that it was all in the hand of God. And God said, that's okay. You go ahead and go down that path. And the angels are saying, God, aren't you going to stop him right now? No, I, got, I know what I'm going to do whenever he gets down that path just long enough. I believe he has that way. Amen. And, and uh, you know, they, and he just, he just has, he knows how to operate in lives. And, and I believe that in the story of Lazarus, he already knew Lazarus was going to get sick before they came with word. Amen. As God, he already knew Lazarus was going to get sick. As a matter of fact, he says in the in the beginning of the verse, and I'm gonna I, I'll I'll back up just for for just a moment here because he said in verse number four, Jesus, when he heard that he was sick, he said, "This sickness is not unto death." Now the fellow died, but he said it's not unto death. In other words. He's going to be in the tomb for four days, and he's not going to be breathing for four days, but Lazarus is going to be in a temporary home. He's going to have a home in the grave for four days, but it's just temporary. The death that, he's, that he is, he's going to be involved in, it's not a full-time death that he's going to be there forever, but this death that he's going to have is going to be for four days. And I believe, and I believe that Jesus already knew whenever Lazarus was sick what he was going to do. Because if I love somebody, and I knew that they were sick unto death, I mean literally sick unto death, I would do everything in my power to get to that individual, especially as my best friend. Right. I, I'd be at their bedside. And, and I can't do anything for him, but I'd be there because I just want to be their friend. I mean, I can just sit there and, uh, you know, read the newspaper or whatever and say, I'm here for you, man. <laughs> you want me to go buy you a Sprite or something? I, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm here for you, but I can't do much for you. And if Jesus knew, you'd sure understand that if he knew what was going on, the least he could have done was show up, you know, before he died. And he said, I already know what I'm going to do. Matter of fact, what's interesting about the story is that he tarried two more days. Don't you think he'd have put a little urgency in his step, hop on the next flight to Bethany? You know, just, okay, uh, you know, give me the fastest camel, mule, ass, whatever it is. I don't care. Just give me something to ride on. and Let me, let me ride to Bethany as quick as possible because I got to get there. Uh, Lazarus is sick unto death. The rest of y'all, uh, disciples, you go ahead and stay here, but I got I to gotta hop on whatever type of transportation I got to get there because that Lazarus is almost ready to die, and he's my best friend. And uh, you guys go ahead and help hold church without me. I'm just going over to Bethany. No, that's not what he said. The Bible said he tarried for two more days. So they walked to him, and they walked back home, and they said, uh, Mary and Martha said, did you tell him? And they said, yeah, well, he'll be here just any minute. He's, he's a friend. And Jesus just kept on teaching. Didn't seem like a, the way to operate. And then whenever I'm reading this a little bit farther, Jesus said, well, I think it's time we head on to Bethany. And the disciples said, you know what? Don't, don't you remember they was going to stone you? Don't you remember that they was going to kill you? And Jesus said, yeah, I, basically, yeah, I understand that that's what's getting ready to happen. But I have a work that I'm getting ready to do. Now, I want to now I want to take it to the setting just for a moment of the timing of everything. This is just a week or two away from the Passover. I don't have the exact date. But it's a week or two before the Passover. It's a week or two before the time 
when he will go to an upper room and have his last supper. It's just a week or two away from a triumphal entry. It's just a week or two away, amen, from Pilate's judgment hall. It's just a week or two away from being nailed to the cross. And Jesus said, I've got to have somebody die so that I can let the world know that I am the resurrection and the life. I need to let somebody die so that within a couple of weeks they can remember that I said I am the resurrection and the life. I've got to have somebody die because there's a miracle getting ready to happen bigger than Lazarus because in three days you destroyed this temple and in three days I will raise it up. <coughs> but I've got to have somebody die in order for me to bring it to pass Amen. That there is a resurrection and there is a place that's greater than you've ever had before. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to know that the God that we serve is in the business of letting us know, amen, I'm still in control of everything within our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he... So he gets to land, so he gets to Bethany and Martha shows up and she says, I, I, I'm so thankful you come, but your timing is wrong. If you'd have been here a few days ago, my brother wouldn't have been dead. If you had been here a couple days ago and I don't read in the scripture, we wouldn't have had to pay for the funeral. We'd have been here a couple days ago. We wouldn't have had to stand beside the grave and cry. But we've had, we've had days where we've been grieving. Our hearts been broken. And man, it seems like all of our hope is gone. And if you'd have been here a couple days ago, we wouldn't have had to deal with that. And Jesus said, uh, he's going to live. It's going to be all right. And she said, uh, thank you very much. I know there's a resurrection. You know, it's the things that you'd say at a funeral. It's okay, one of these days, he's going to live again, and there's going to be a place called heaven. And, and Martha said, thank you for trying to encourage me at this time in my life. I'm grieving real big time, but I'm missing my brother, and I, but I know that one of these days I'm going to see him in heaven. Isn't that, a wonderful, isn't that a wonderful thought? And Jesus said, no, Martha, listen to me again. I didn't say that it's in the resurrection I am the resurrection. Right. He said, if you'll listen to me just for a minute, there's something that I want to, that I want to proclaim to you because about two weeks from now, hallelujah, I'm going to be up on a cross. And when I'm on the cross, I want everybody that's been a disciple, that's standing around at that time grieving, I want you to remember one thing. I am the resurrection. Even though I'm on the cross, I am the resurrection. Oh, hallelujah. Even though they beat my back to ribbons, I am the resurrection. Even though I'll draw my last breath and I'll say it's finished and I'll drop my head in death, I am the resurrection and I am the life. You're going to have to look beyond what you're seeing with the natural eye because there's something that's going to happen. Hallelujah. From that point, in three days, I'm going to be resurrected because I have made a declaration. Amen. At a funeral, amen, or at a grave of Lazarus, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Hallelujah. He that believeth in me, amen, shall never die. Do you believe? Even Martha, he said, I got news for you. I'm not just here just to raise somebody from the dead, but my timing, hallelujah, Calvary's getting ready to happen. And I need some folks that would understand I have the power over death, over hell, and over the grave. 
Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And so, so he, she said, uh, yes, I believe. Uh, I believe. Thank you so much for the faith. Amen. And, and, uh, and she said, uh, she said, uh, uh, you got anything else to say? And he said, well, I just want you to know I'm the resurrection. She said, I'm, uh, yes, Lord, I believe you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that. Yes, I yes, I do. Uh, could, somebody, could somebody go get Mary? I, I don't I understand what he's saying here. Maybe she'll understand. And Mary came in, and whenever Mary came up to, up to where Jesus where, where Jesus is, they called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, uh, the master has come. Verse number, verse number uh, 28. She went her way and called Mary and said, uh, hey, Mary, I, I just got some news for you. The master has come and calleth for thee. And as soon as she heard that, she arose and came to him. And now Jesus, amen, was not yet into the town, but was in that place where Martha had met him. She just, he just stood there and Martha says, excuse me, thank you for seeing me. I, I got to go say something. I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, Mary, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe you'll be able to sort this thing out a little bit better than what I did. But Jesus is calling for you. And uh, Mary came, and, and whenever she saw him, she started heading toward where Jesus was. And, and, uh, and he was just waiting on her. And, and, uh, and then the Jews, which were at her house, comforting her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out. They followed her and said, oh, she's going back to the grave, and she's going to weep there. And when Mary was come to Je where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. She said, thanks a lot, amen, for being here, but uh, we did send you a message a few days ago. And if you'd have been here just about that time, we, we wouldn't have to be going through what we're going through right now. And Jesus, when she saw her weeping, when he saw her weeping, the Jews also weeping with her, which came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. And the, and the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. I'm wondering if his weeping was, I, I wonder if it was the flesh weeping or if it was in the spirit weeping. In the flesh grieving because of a friend or was it because the spirit was saying, I've never been around a place like this where people would not believe me that I am the resurrection and the life. Then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. And some said, well, you know, if he'd only been here a couple days ago, this man wouldn't have had to die. And Jesus groaned in himself, coming to the grave. A stone was upon the grave. And Jesus said, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. She said, Lord, I just, because he's been dead four days. Lord, it's going to be embarrassment if you roll that stone back right now. And Jesus turned to her and said, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? He said, look, I, I, I've got something. I didn't come here whenever you wanted me to on purpose. I, I didn't show up and I didn't give you your miracle in your time on purpose. But just because I didn't give it to you in your time does not mean you're not going to get your miracle. Just because you didn't get it the way that you expected me to operate doesn't mean that I, that I have less of God. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to do anything for you. Just because, amen, a miracle doesn't come in our life and we say, oh, if it doesn't come on Friday, amen, it must not be in the plan and will of God. We've got to understand that God's ways are just a, just a teeny bit bigger than my way. Hallelujah. And uh, he knows the end from the beginning. And he has a plan that's greater than our plan. He's got a plan that is, that is more powerful than anything that we could ever begin to comprehend. And in God's way of doing things, amen, God has the way, hallelujah, of showing us that he's still in control. Amen. And he stepped to the tomb and he said, roll the stone back. It looks like there's no more hope. It looks like it can't come. It looks like you're never going to get anything from God. 
God. Amen. But if you'll hold off just a little while longer, if you'll obey me, amen, you're going to see me roll, amen, a, a stone back. You're going to see, and when you roll the stone back, you're going to see a dead man come back to life, and you're going to be able to unwrap him, and there's going to be a witness that's going to be shown to the world that I am the resurrection and I am the life. Now, when I'm, when, I'm, when, when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, you know, he did this two weeks before. Don't you think that those priests and don't you think that those uh, Pharisees that were after Jesus, don't you think that they got a little upset? Matter of fact, when I read the rest of this story, go on down, I believe it's in the very next chapter, the Bible said that the religious leaders were trying to kill Jesus because of the miracle he did with, with Lazarus. And they not only were, at, and you read it on down, and it said they not only decided that they wanted to kill Jesus, but they wanted to kill Lazarus. The one that had been resurrected, they said. You know, we just, isn't that about the most crazy thing? You know, they said, okay, you know, he, he got his miracle, but we got to bump off the miracle because, because if, as long as there's a miracle testifying of the power of Jesus, then uh, we, you know, so we got to just shut the miracle down. And so the only thing they could figure out to do with Lazarus is, okay, let's try to assassinate him somehow. I don't know what we're going to do with him. And, uh, and when, and, 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 uh, and Jesus knew what they were doing. And he raised Lazarus from the dead. Amen. I believe as a witness so that, the, so that those religious leaders would have something to think about when they're crucifying him and the earth is shaking and the heavens, amen, are darkening up and the veil is being rent in the temple. They're going to be hearing some words echoing in their mind that says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Amen. And when, they, when they're in that midst, when he's in the tomb, they're going to say, I remember he said, you destroy this temple and in three days I'm going to raise it up again. Amen. He did it on purpose because he wanted to prove to them, ain't no grave going to hold this body down. Ain't nothing going to keep me from resurrection morn. Hallelujah. Because I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death of hell and of the grave. And two weeks before him and his crucifixion, he said, there's a man that's got to die in order for me to get glory one more time. Oh, hallelujah. I wonder if we could understand that there's sometimes we might face some things in our life. There's trial that God already knew before we ever stepped into the trial. What we was getting ready to face because he knew that he was going to make a way out. Right. And God said, if, 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 I'd given it, if I'd just given you your way and you'd have never had the trial, you'd have never had a testimony of how I brought you out. But I put the trial in your place. I put this little test in here. And it looks like it's all going to be hopeless. It looks like it ain't never going to work out for the good. It looks like you're never going to see a miracle. It looks like, amen, that the last breath is getting drawn out of your body. It looks like that hope. Amen, you can believe God for this as long as, as, long as it's breathing. As long as there seems to be a little thread of hope. But all of a sudden, when the hope dies, amen, God just says, let me let it be in the ground for just a little while. Because because I want you to know there's no time whenever it ain't a hopeless situation. I want you to know that there's no such thing as no hope in the hands of God. I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. Go back to the dreams. Go back to the try times whenever God's done a miracle for you. And let God do it again. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He just said, look, I, I just want you to know, amen, that the reason I'm going to Bethany on this day is because I have something, I have, a, I, have, I have a message that I've got to send. I'm still the resurrection. I'm still the life. Amen. And they probably wouldn't accept it the way that they're accepting it today, but I've got to bring it to them today to let them know. 
I've already resurrected two other people. I've already took Jairus' daughter and rose her from the dead just a few short minutes after she died. I've already stopped a funeral on its way, amen, uh, in the city of Nain. I've already stopped a widow and said, look, you want your son back? I'll be glad to give it back to you. But now I'm going to take it to another level, and I'm going to take it after the cemetery, amen, after the grave, and I'm going to tell them, roll the stone back because, because whenever I die, I want them to understand you might destroy the flesh, but you ain't destroying this spirit. This spirit's going to come out of the grave and it's going to have a glorified body. Amen. It's, it's not going to be the same body that it always has been. Amen. Can I tell you that, there's, that there is something that's going to that, that's take place in our lives? Amen. And I'm, and I'm getting really close, but there's something getting ready to take place in our lives. I believe at the coming of the Lord. This flesh that I've been dealing with for all my life. Hallelujah. Arthritis that I've got in my knees if I get on them too long. And if I've, been, if I've been running all day and all of a sudden I decide to kneel down, it takes me a minute to think about it before I get up. Oh, hallelujah. There's coming a day. <laughs> Ain't no pill can take care of what, what, what's getting ready to happen to me. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, they put me on a blood pressure medicine because my blood pressure gets a little high at times. There's going to be a day. Well, I throw that blood pressure medicine aside because I'm going to have a glorified body. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. The other day somebody was at work and they said, uh, man, I'm having to work harder because I'm younger. I said, keep on griping. I said, I I'd kind of like that trouble. <laughs> that being younger, you know. <laughs> And, uh, but I'm going to step on the other side. And I'm never going to be old. I'm going to live forever and ever. And I'm never going to die. Oh, hallelujah. There's a resurrected body. There's a new, there, hallelujah, there's something that's getting ready to take place. I believe the Lord is getting ready to come back. I don't know exactly what day or what hour, but I am anxiously awaiting, amen, that, that soon return of the Lord. And I believe that the reason that the Lord stepped to Lazarus' tomb is to let me know, hallelujah, amen, Jesus isn't the only one that can resurrect, amen, anybody, hallelujah, that's a friend of Jesus, he'll resurrect him. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm closer than a friend. I'm his brother. I've got his blood flowing through my, through my veins. I'm not only his brother. Amen. I'm his son. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we're now with the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You, you, you see, you see what, what, what it was saying, and, and the Lord said, "I just got one thing that I'd like to, I'd like to take him by Lazarus." Oh, I know that he's going to draw his last breath, and I know there's going to be a lot of sorrow, but that sorrow that I'm taking him through at that time is not the end of sorrow. I'm going to walk him out of that tomb, and whenever he walks out of the tomb, they'll one more time understand. Yes, I care in the middle of hopelessness. Yes, I'll be there when it doesn't look like there'll be another day. Yes, I've been there, and I know what you're going through because I ordained things. And I, was, and I knew the day that I would come to Lazarus' tomb. I didn't accidentally come there on that day. I came on the right day at the right time. No, I wasn't late. I was right on time. And I serve a God who's still right on time. He is right on time. He is right on time. Oh, hallelujah. Let's stand together today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. While the world will look and say, ain't no way it can happen now. God says, oh, but I'm still in control. And in my time, not in your time, but in my time, the miracle will happen. Praise God. Let's worship the Lord one more time. 
I love you, Jesus. I thank you for your promises. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know what we'd be facing today, but I feel like there might be somebody in this place that might be in a situation that you might say it's impossible. And I've come with a word from the Lord that says it ain't impossible because he hadn't done the miracle yet, but he wants to do the miracle in your life. Amen. You just let it put your trust in him. Let's worship him one more time today. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I praise you for what you do. He's on time, God. Yes, he is.